This video will introduce you to performing spatial joins within ArcGIS Pro. We'll look at an example in which we want to pass information from one polygon layer into another polygon layer. Spatial joins are easy to implement and generally run rather quickly. However, they may not always be as robust as other geoprocessing operations. We'll take a look at some of the limitations. We're working with two datasets. The first is a polygon neighborhoods layer in which each polygon represents a neighborhood in the city of Pittsburgh. We can see that in addition to the neighborhood ID and name, it contains a wealth of historical population information. We also have our parks layer. The parks layer is also a polygon feature class with each polygon representing either a park or collection of parks that share the same name. Our goal is to summarize the area of parkland within each neighborhood. Now our rule for this is that if a park even touches the neighborhood boundary, it's going to be included in the summary statistics. Let's take a look at an example. This is the Central Business District neighborhood. We want to find the area of all of these parks in the Central Business District neighborhood. Once again, the park is included if it's within the neighborhood or even with a portion of it touches the neighborhood boundary. The spatial join is the perfect analytical framework for conducting this analysis. Ideally, we would just use the shape area field within the parks attribute table to summarize the total area of all those parks that intersect a neighborhood. However, in the version of ArcGIS Pro that I'm running here, there's a bug where the shape area summaries don't work correctly. So I'm going to create a new field called park area, and I'm going to populate this field with the shape area information, essentially duplicating the shape area field. We'll then use this new field in the spatial join to summarize the area. A spatial join is a geoprocessing operation, so from the analysis menu we'll click on tools and within the geoprocessing search box enter spatial join to pull up the spatial join tool. The parameters for any geoprocessing tool can be confusing and for spatial join they're even more so, so you may want to go ahead and launch the help by clicking on the question mark icon prior to running the tool to familiarize yourself with how spatial join works. The target features are going to be those features whose geometries we want to retain. In this case, it's the neighborhoods. We want to summarize information about the parks, meaning they're the join features, within the neighborhoods. The output feature class should be given a meaningful name. In this case, I'm going to call it Neighborhoods, SJ Parks, Intersect, and store it in my Project Geo database. You may think the join operation should be set to one to many in this case, but because we're going to be summarizing the park area for a single neighborhood, we want a one to one join to be set. Moving down to the output field section, by default, all fields from both the parks and neighborhoods layer are included on the output, but I don't need all of these and having them would just add to confusion. So I'm going to remove all the extraneous fields from the output fields dialog. I'm maintaining the neighborhood ID and neighborhood name as those are crucial fields so that I know the neighborhood and I'm also keeping the park area. Now I don't just want to return the first record of the park that intersects the neighborhood, I want to summarize all of the area values for all parks that intersect each and every neighborhood. The match option is set to intersect. In this case this means that any part of any park that intersects a neighborhood gets included in the output. Changing the match option to something like contains, within, or have their center in will result in a different type of output. Once I've finished establishing the parameters for the spatial join tool, I'm going to click run and it'll run the geoprocessing tool, generating a new feature class. With our spatial join operation complete, we can open the attribute table to explore its contents. This is a geodatabase feature class, so it has the standard object ID, shape, shape length, and shape area fields. The join count are the number of parks that intersect each and every neighborhood. We retain the neighborhood ID and neighborhood name from the original neighborhood dataset, and then we have the park area, which is the sum of the area for all the parks that intersected a neighborhood. Comparing this to the original neighborhoods attribute table, we see that both attribute tables have 90 records. Let's zoom into a neighborhood to better understand how this spatial join worked. We can see that there's three parks identified in the join count field that intersected this neighborhood. We can see the three parks by clicking on them. There's a small one right in the center, a smaller one to the north, and a larger one to the south. All three of these parks, despite the fact that one crosses into an adjacent neighborhood, are included, and it's important to keep in mind 
that that pox area field, which is the sum of the area of all of those pox that intersect, does not just reflect the portions of those pox within the neighborhood, it's the area of the entirety of the pox. Let's put some finishing touches on this data set. We've got a number of neighborhoods that have no pox that intersect them, so the pox area ended up as null. We're going to select these records, run a calculate field operation to change those values to zero. This will help us with the symbology. With that all set, we can go and open up the symbology, change our symbology to graduated colors, and symbolize using the park area field. Once this is all done, we've put together a nice visualization showing the area of all parks that intersect each and every neighborhood in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. In this video, we showed you how to perform a spatial join using neighborhoods and parks. While spatial join is an easy way to summarize parks that intersect each and every neighborhood, it would be a poor choice if we wanted to cut up those park polygons and calculate only the portions of those parks that fall within the neighborhood.